Using Wi-Fi without NordVPN could mean sharing your private stuff with more people than you think. NordVPN. Online security starts with a click. The world's most advanced cold wallet for the new generation of cryptocurrency lovers. Descent. Hey, Tom. Hey, Alex. Thank you so much for making yourself available. Uh, I was saying to Tom before you came on, Alex, but I'll say it to you as well, right? This is my favorite, 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 most favorite recording of every month. And I so appreciate both of you making yourself available because I know you're ridiculously busy. I'm going to have all the links to your materials, you know, your, your channels and stuff, mainly in the description below. And we are going to cover lots and lots of stuff because there is too much stuff. There is too much news happening. We need a moratorium just so we can catch up a little. Before well, that's we part start. of their plan, Rich. You know that. <laughs> Before we start, keep us all off balance all the time. Right? That's, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I keep interrupting you because I'm I'm doing my Davos impersonation right now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, before we start, and, and this bit may not be on. This bit may not be on Otis, on YouTube. I'm just, I may have to cut this bit out. Right. Okay. So that um, public service announcement over. Financial fragility because we could go all over the place. I just saw something about Weibo. The Chinese have said. Get ready for a war. Nancy Pelosi is going to be going to Taiwan. And uh, the United States government, not only can they not define what a woman is, they can't define a recession. Or they can say what isn't a recession. <laughs> well, whatever we say, it isn't, right? Like, I, see, Rich, I say this all the time. You guys know this. Like, I, I, hate to, I hate to beat a dead horse, but, you know, it's communism, so I don't really mind. Which is that commies always like to change the definitions mm -hmm. of words. It's one of the hallmarks of 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 collect it doesn't communism collectivism of, of those who are trying to obfuscate what they're trying to do will always mm -hmm. change the definitions of words and it is absolutely necessary look to re remember that depressions used to be there used to be two types of things we either were an expansion or a depression and then they mm -hmm. and then we got into keynesian counter cyclical um economics which then by definition made sure that we never had a, a depression ever again because well when the economy starts to contract we print money and we add government spending into gdp mm -hmm. because yes. you know 30 50 years ago when i was born a government spending wasn't part of gdp mm -hmm. it is now it is. like because it wasn't even gdp back then it was gmp Tom, 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 so, Tom, i'm gonna have to rein you both in Okay, all right. Stay on forward. There is a direction to this, right? But I agree. Like you know, I'm a child protection social worker. I don't add to GDP. I don't really produce anything, um, but it counts anyway. But about terms and stuff like that, right? People are talking about you. You know, I'm talking about Alex Kruger saying that the Fed have now pivoted with their 0.75 percent basis point rate hike, right? But I want to start with financial fragility. That's what I was thinking about. Like the consequences of that. The noises that I'm hearing about what's coming our way and likely to happen in August, and then we can go wherever we go. No. Well, I think financial fragility, you can't start the process without discussing what the ECB did last week and Tell why us. they did it. Tell us. Well, they raised interest rates 50 basis points after, by the way, the CPI came in for the Eurozone completely in line with, uh, with expectations. Now, when was the last time you ever saw the, you get a number like that right? Uh, the answer is never. Mm -hmm. And then that was the day before or two days before the Italian government mm -hmm. fell. And then mm -hmm. on Thursday, Lagarde, and, and then we start the whisper number, well, the ECB is not going to have to raise 50 basis points. And of course, what I said was, hey, um, if we expected Eurozone inflation to be 6.8%, and that's the reason why we're raising 50 basis points, why weren't you telling us you were going to raise 50 basis points last week? Why is it all of a sudden you're going to raise 50 basis points? Obviously, because the Italian government fell on Wednesday, and that's what actually prompted your decision. And you knew the Italian government was going to fall on Monday, which is why you whispered that to Bloomberg to put out into the and start prepping the, the, the markets for it. And so once the ECB starts that process, but at the same time, of course, then they turn around and say, hey, we're going to do unlimited QE, where we're going to sell unlimited amounts of of Europe, of, of German debt and make them pay for bailing out the Italians, which at the same time, well, well, in six weeks, the Italians may not even be a part of the European Union because the brothers of Italy may come in and go, you know what, Italy, we're good, out. So well, I don't, how can they raise interest rates and have unlimited QE? This makes no sense to me. What do you mean? <laughs> I, I mean, they're commies. Well, they're, 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 did I not mention they were commies? Like, <laughs> they're, 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 I, I, I think I think I'm right in saying this, Tom. You're you're the expert on this. I sure. think that they raised interest rates by 50 base points, which right. means that they went from minus 0.5 to zero. Back to zero. <laughs> so they, right. We actually have ECB yeah. interest rates back at zero. zero. But if I can just 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 intrude sure. here, which is sure. to say. That this has, I think, been an astonishing period because we're now seeing the whole crack 
the whole thing in Europe cracking. We have re we've had a real interest rate rise in the United States. Now that is that is a real rise in interest rates. It's Absolutely, seven fifty basis points. There's you you can hear that they're all screaming here. Elizabeth Warren, all of these people, they're all uh, you know furious about this. Be under no doubt at all. This is this is. I mean, this is the death knell of the Euro project. At least this is what I personally think. Mm. Even, even the Financial Times is now saying that um, um, Lagarde is between a, a rock and a hard place. This is an absolute disaster for them. And, of course, they don't know what to do. So, you know, we're going to see. Now, there's one point where I really, I, I'm going to just take one disagreement with uh, what John said. The Italian government didn't fall. Draghi ran away. <laughs> he <laughs> ran away. Fair and enough. He, 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 he Fair created, enough. He created a, a crisis, a political crisis in Italy mm -hmm. over a waste incinerator in Rome. A, 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 a vote which, you know, Italian go governments win and lose votes. He actually won the vote, remember? He won the vote. Mm -hmm. The Five Star Movement was doing all kinds of funny things because they're really collapsing. They wanted to show that they're still around, so they made a big issue over some social benefits and that kind of thing. But Draghi won the vote. Nobody within the Italian political class thought that he would then say that he was resigning. And he, did he announced that he was going to resign. And then there's shock, horror, amongst the political class. And I really do mean, you know, when I say the political class, I mean the people who are on the side of the WEF, the EU, all of those sorts of people. The right. president of Italy, Signor Mattarella, who is a dyed-in-the-wool WEF, yep. EU, technocrat, apparatchik, call him whatever you like, persuaded Draghi to stay on until this vote of confidence on, you know, a week later. Draghi wins the vote of confidence, even mm -hmm. though by this time he's completely discredited. The other parties really don't want, you know, the big parties, Salvini, the Forza Italia of Berlusconi, the Five Star Movement, they're not voting for him. But no, they're not voting against him either. So he could still, in theory, have pulled it back if he'd really fought to stay as prime minister. And he walks out of the parliamentary chamber beforehand before the vote is even cast. So he has deliberately torpedoed his own government. Now, why has he done this? I think it's because he knows perfectly well that shortly the Federal Reserve Board is going to raise interest rates by 750 base points. Remember, Draghi himself has been a central banker. He's been the chair of the EU, of, of the ECB. Yes. And of course, what he knows Lagarde knows. And I mean, if you don't think... If, any, if anybody, if, any, if Lagarde yeah. consults with anyone outside of the halls of the ECB, it would be with Draghi, who was the president of the ECB for, what, 10 years? Exactly. You know, and remember, exactly. he was, you know, so, like, yeah, of course. And, you know, but at the same time, like, if when, I, when I saw, Alex, that uh, Lega, fi um, um, Five Star, and um, Forza Italia all walked out of Parliament denying him a quorum, regardless. Yeah. So, I mean, he had to walk out of parliament because, oh, absolutely. you know, because they weren't going to, they were just to deny him a quorum on anything else from there on out. So, absolutely. Absolutely. so now we're, but, but, now we're, but, but, but yeah. he, he actually created Helped. that yeah. situation, which, yeah. which arose. And the reason is he knows, he knows that the writing is on the wall, whatever mm -hmm. else he is. I mean, he's not Christine Lagarde. He's right. a much cleverer man than yeah. Christine Lagarde. He, he can see <laughs> the drift. And direction that things are taking. So Lagarde and he would have been in contact. Lagarde would have known that the government, that the Italian government, was about to fall because mm. Draghi would have told her what he was intending to do. It is inconceivable that he didn't. So right. this is what set the scene for that move by the ECB, uh, um, which and, um, and so is, is, uh, and so now I'm looking at I'm looking at the situation, right? Tom, and, Tom, Tom, Tom yeah. before you look at the situation, I just want to let people know the rest of this video is going to be on Odyssey. That's it. Mm. So you should join me there. Plus, also on Odyssey, there's a short, mm. short video that I've posted about why Britain should not join the UK because there's that conversation is brewing. Sorry, join the EU because that mm. conversation has been brewing. And mm. um, no way, no way, no, 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 no. And one of the reasons is because the U EU is breaking. Over to you, Tom. OK, so thinking about this right now that we have this this situation and Mattarella desperately wanted to try and keep.